بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters At times we have enemies whom we don't know And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this Sometimes we feel unsafe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will test us with a little bit of uncertainty and he may test us with the issue of enmity coming from people we may know, we may not know. At times we have hypocrites who might smile on your face, but they stab you on your back. Now, what do I do? What does revelation have in it for me in terms of direction? What should I do? Because if I start worrying about such people, I will probably become depressed. I will become saddened. I won't be able to progress in life. I need to carry on. I need to get up every morning with a fresh smile on my face. I need to have a fresh and renewed hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To answer that question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully puts it in Surah An-Nisa. Wallahu a'lamu bi'a'daikum wa kafa billahi waliya wa kafa billahi nasira. Allah knows best who your enemies are and Allah is sufficient for you as a protector and Allah is sufficient for you as a helper. Who can there be better than Allah as a protector for you and I? Who can there be better than Allah as a protector or a guard, one who is going to guard us and help us, a helper? Who can there be better than Allah? Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, when you are feeling uncertain, when you don't know, leave it in the hands of Allah. Read your dua and continue. And Allah will open your doors. Allah will grant you a sense of calmness in your heart. Allah will give you contentment so that you can get up in the morning and you are not worried about anything. Bismillah in the name of Allah. الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم. I am taking the name of Allah by whose name nothing can ever harm me at all, neither on earth nor in the heavens. And indeed, He is all hearing, all knowing. سبحان الله. So these are some of the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Use them, make them, and you need to feel the comfort. Then leave it in the hands of Allah. They cannot touch you. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِمَا قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ the Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you need to know that if the entire nation gets together to harm you, they cannot cause any harm to you unless Allah has written it against you already. Leave it in the hands of Allah. Subhanallah. So this is something amazing because when we read through the pages of the Quran, we find so many verses where there were people from the very beginning who were not only the personal enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam because they were jealous of him, they accused him, they said that he was actually after things that he was not. He was known as the most honest and the most trustworthy prior to prophethood, which means if he didn't lie regarding material items of the world prior to prophethood, why on earth would he be lying regarding the hereafter? Subhanallah. Wasn't he known as as sadiqul Amin, the most truthful, the most honest? Subhanallah. So if they did that to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to the companions of his, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. Who do you think you and I are? We don't stand a chance. They will go to town with us. Subhanallah. They will literally say everything about us. When they say it, learn to smile. Tell yourself, the most beloved unto Allah, they did this to him. If they are doing it to me, there is something Allah loves about me. Tell yourself that and be steadfast. Subhanallah, nothing will harm you ever in the world. Inna waliyya Allahu al-ladhi nazzal al-kitaba 
وهو يتولى الصالحين my protector is indeed the one who has revealed the book Allah and he is the one who will protect the good the pious and those who are trying to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasbi Allah la ilaha illa hu alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arshi al-azim Allah is sufficient for me I don't need to worry about anything. Hasbi Allah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah, besides He. And He is the Lord of the great throne. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. When they came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him that they have prepared a huge army to fight you. What happened to him? Allahu Akbar, instead of worry and concern, he decided, you know what? We are going to hand our affairs to Allah. He said, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us. And he is the best disposer of our affairs. Remember, if they manage to harm you even a little, perhaps long term there is some benefit for you. Take a look at the battles that took place at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they went for Umrah and they were not allowed to enter, they struck a treaty in Hudaybiyah and they came back. Some of the companions were saying, how can this be? Alasna ala al-haqqi. Are we not on the straight path, on the truth, on the straight and narrow? Why would it be that we had to strike an agreement with these people that we are going to go back without the Umrah? And Allah revealed verses, <laughs> Indeed, we have granted you an outright clear victory. People like Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and some of the companions were asking, who? Is this actually a victory? We are going back. Hang on, be patient. Victory comes with those who are patient. You need to know that victory comes with patience. If not today, tomorrow you will have your day of smiling. Subhanallah. Tomorrow you will have your day of smiling. You will be happy. You will achieve victory. And so the Prophet ﷺ told them, if Allah calls it victory, it is indeed victory. A few years later, they entered back into Makkah al Mukarramah, victorious, the victory of Makkah. There were hundreds of thousands. In fact, the Sahaba anhum were in their tens of thousands. And do you know what? The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ on the day of victory, when he knew, I've won it now, subhanallah. He was the most humble ever. He was not arrogant. He was not haughty. Anyone who sought forgiveness on that day was forgiven. Not only that, when he had the power, when he was able to do whatever he wanted to do with his enemies, what did he choose to do? He asked them a question. And I love this question because it teaches me a lot. When you are powerful, when you have wealth, when you have authority, when you are a person who has people under him, when you are the, you know, the boss, as they say, and you think you are, what will you do? The Prophet ﷺ was higher than all of that. Those are mere descriptions of the dunya. He was afdalul khalqi wa akramul rusul. He was the most noble of all prophets, the best of all creation. Here comes the Prophet ﷺ asking them, Ya ma'ashara Quraysh, ma'adha tadunnuna anni fa'ilun bikum? O people of Quraysh. And each one of them standing there, they know what they did. They know they harmed. They know they killed. They know they stole. They know they oppressed. They know they wronged. But they're standing quietly in front of this man who has a huge army. He's come victorious. He's asking them, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? What are they going to say? They are hoping for good. We are wishing that you will do something good. He says, Go, all of you, you are free. No retribution today. I'm going to tell you what the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, Joseph, may peace be upon him, told his brothers. La there is no retribution against you today. Go, go. You guys are all free. Don't worry. Let's learn to put the past behind us and let's move forward and progress. My brothers, my sisters, that day will come when we will witness the victory. But there is a condition. What is the condition? Let's listen to it from Revelation. It's much better than for us to just say it. 
Musa alayhi salatu was salam. He was oppressed. The people of Banu Israel, they were oppressed by the Pharaoh for years on end. Harun and Musa, the two of them, Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them. They make a dua to Allah after years of hardship. And what do they say? They say, Oh Allah, we're watching this man. He is causing more and more problems. The longer you leave him, the more he is creating disaster. Rabbana innaka atayta fir'awna wa mala'ahu zinatan wa amwalam fil hayati dunya Rabbana liyudillu an sabilik Oh Allah, this Pharaoh, you've given him so much of beautification of the dunya and the wealth and whatnot and authority and he's only using it to turn people away and astray from you and your deen Rabbana tumis ala amwalihim wa shdud ala qunubihim فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ Oh Allah, extinguish their wealth. Oh Allah, harden their hearts, tighten their hearts. Imagine to extinguish wealth. اِطْمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ You know, thumbs is to switch it off. Oh Allah, switch off their income. Not only their income, destroy them completely. Why would the Prophet say this? After years on end, he is saying, Oh Allah, these people are not going to learn until and unless they see the punishment. Now that was a dua that he made out of desperation right at the end. Do you know what Allah tells him? And this is the point that I am raising. Allah says, I want you to know that I have answered your prayer. So both of you need to remain steadfast until you see the prayer coming true in front of you. The prayer is answered, but it took some time before it was seen. Allah says, I hear you all the time. If I say, oh Allah, help me. Allah heard it. He heard it. He knows it. He responded it. But he may not give me exactly what I want right now. But already it's in the works. It's in the process. It's going to come sooner or later. In some scenarios, I might see it in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your, your dua is answered. But I want you to be steadfast. So this goes back to what I was saying. Victory will come to us for as long as we remain steadfast and we don't follow the paths of those who don't know Allah, those who don't recognize Allah, follow the true path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us victory. I want to end off by a beautiful verse that we read this evening. We spoke about enemies. We spoke about people we don't know. We spoke about hatred and jealousy, etc. Encapsulated in what happened to the Prophet ﷺ and his companions and Musa alayhi salam. At times, we don't like someone. Why? Whatever the reason is, I'm a human being. I might not feel comfortable with someone. I might just want to stay away from them. Perhaps you're a human. Human nature is maybe you don't like someone. Try to understand. When you dislike someone, you need to be moderate in that disliking. Perhaps tomorrow they might become friends of yours. Perhaps tomorrow they might become close to you. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, don't ever let your hatred for someone make you be unjust towards them. Subhanallah. Allah says, be just. That is closer to piety. When you have a relationship with Allah, if you don't like someone, you don't like them. Don't start lying about them. Don't create stories about them. Don't want to hurt them and harm them in an unjustified way, completely unjustified, because then you are the one who's wrong. How will the help of Allah come to you? So do not let your hatred of someone or let's use the term dislike. Your dislike of someone make you do something oppressive towards them. Be just. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's connection between you and him. And it manifests that you really are bothered about the day you are going to meet with Allah. May Allah make our accounting on that day easy. 
May Allah forgive our shortcomings. May Allah gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in a way that we can become the best of people prior to our death. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamina awakhiraha, wa khayra a'malina khawatimaha. Oh Allah, let the best of our days be the last days. And let the best of our deeds be the last of the deeds we are going to do on earth. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, Man kana akhiru kalamihi min dunya la ilaha illa Allah, dakhal al-jannah. Whoever's last words before they leave the dunya is La ilaha illallah, that person will enter Jannah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.